I would like to do is just share some thoughts with you. I know the topic for this evening is digital disruption, uh, but I'm going to come at disruption from the opposite end, which is growth and innovation, because that's how my brain works. That's how we at Verizon work. We focus on growth and innovation, and then if disruption happens, so be it. So that's the way I'm going to come at it. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, uh, throughout my career uh, with technology shifts, actually with uh, continued uh, technology advancements and rapid shifts in technology, uh, we've seen tremendous opportunities for growth and innovation. Take us back to the 1980s. That's, where, that's when, you know, my, my career started. Uh, it was about computing, uh, personal computers, mini computers got created in the 80s. Uh, that is when computing became affordable. You know, until then, it was really large corporations that could afford computing. And then as you roll the clock forward, you've seen what's happened uh, with networking, with internet, with mobility, uh, the last several years with cloud computing, and all these technology shifts have created lots and lots of growth and innovation for various corporations. Uh, <clears throat> so the way I think about things is, you know, the last century, the tail end of last century was about computing and networking. Uh, the last 10, 15 years, we've seen mobility has been hot. Uh, cloud computing, the last six, seven years, has been a big, big trend. Uh, but now we are entering a new era where it's not just about digital stuff. It's not about computing and networks and technology. It's even physical assets are merging with digital. And there's a lot of innovation going on in terms of how companies, you know, consumers consume physical assets. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, we also see uh, everything is becoming software controlled. You know, our lives are software controlled, right? Uh, the way we manage our entertainment, the way we communicate with our friends and family, uh, the way we consume services um, or products, uh, the way we even get healthcare, uh, one of my colleagues is going to talk about that, or the way we even shop and purchase, you know, uh, Jeremy is going to talk about that. Uh, everything is becoming software controlled with lots and lots of digital instrumentation which creates lots of data and analytics where humans are completely predictable. Maybe not today, but, but in the near future. Uh, so I, uh, I tend to think of this as, you know, we were in the era of transactions where humans would transact with technology, uh, but then we moved into where technology became a ubiquitous part of our daily lives. But now we're entering an era where, you know, my team terms it uh, augmented intelligence. So it's, it's not just human intelligence that's getting augmented, but even physical goods, our homes, our cars, etc., are getting intelligent, all because of software. Uh, <clears throat> so these are just, just a quick look at you know, what's happened in the last 20, 30 years, and a couple of obvious points. You know, I know everybody here is, is very smart, probably smarter than I am, uh, but I'll, I'll make a couple of obvious points here. Um, you know, as technology shifts, it creates lots and lots of opportunity to innovate, and companies that innovate stay ahead. Sometimes they disrupt other companies, but I don't think any company or any business or any organization sets a mission that, hey, we're gonna disrupt so and so. Everybody sets a mission, a business plan, uh, saying, hey, this is where we want to innovate, and then things happen. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, innovation uh, is very much tied to technology shifts. 
uh, particularly if you look at the last few years.